Welcome back to Lair Academy, it's Mickey again, and today we're going to be covering a short episode in jQuery and Ajax. So to get started, I've created a simple PHP application which will display the latest messages from our database. So you can see that nothing is currently set up, and if we look in the console, we're just seeing a number zero. The first thing I want to show you is the Laravel application. So we're using a single migration here that has the content for the messages. If we take a look, we have a model. We have a message controller, which just returns all the messages or from a certain ID. If we take a look at routes.php, we have our basic welcome, just returning some data here. We also have some routes set up for our all function and the from function. And finally, if we take a look, we have a welcome.play.php and everything is pretty much the same except we're saying latest messages and we're checking to see if we have any messages and if we do, well, let's spit them out in a div. And we have some basic JavaScript written here. So to show kind of everything working here, let's switch over to our console, load up PHP address and tinker and let's create a message. We'll say welcome to the video. If we refresh our page, we'll see the first item, welcome to our video. Now this is just using Blade to display the message and what we want to happen is it to happen in the background. So if we were to create a new message, it would show up here underneath. So we switch back to our view. You can see we have an Ajax call here within get messages. And that Ajax call is going to be calling the messages.latest, which is actually messages from passing an ID. And the ID that we're passing in is our last message, which just happens to be zero right now. So let's change this to grab the last message that we see. So the first thing we need to check is we need to say if we have any messages. So we'll say if the count is bigger than zero, then let's use messages and make sure we grab the last one. We'll grab the ID. Otherwise, just mark it as zero. And it's always best when writing JavaScript to give everything a quick test. So even though we haven't changed much, let's save this and let's test it. And that number should change. And looks like I've made an error. If I look back at my count, yep, I'm missing the parenthesis. So let's add those in. Let's save them. If we refresh, we have an ID of one. And this is just happens to be the ID of this record here. So the next thing we're gonna work on is actually this function in here, so messages latest. So if we switch over to the message controller, we're gonna start editing this from here. What we wanna do is return a response, and let's make sure our response is JSON format. And let's make the variable called messages. So let's actually copy this line here. And so we're going to order by created at descendingly. But the thing we're going to check is where ID is a bigger than the passed in parameter. So last ID. And we're just going to get them all and make sure the ID is an integer. If we switch back to Chrome and we refresh, you can see now we have an object of messages. However, our array is zero, and that's just because we haven't added any messages in. So back in our welcome page, let's actually make this get messages fire every three seconds. Let's create a new function called start messages, and this function is going to be in charge of actually firing that event. So what we will use is a function called set timeout. It's going to accept a anonymous function and all that anonymous function is going to do is call get messages and then we're going to have to pass in the second parameter which is going to be our wait in seconds and because this is actually in milliseconds we'll times that by a thousand next instead of calling get messages let's call start messages so now this is going to run every three seconds and it's going to return the log and on success, we want to make sure that we have start messages again. And that is because set timeout only fires once. So if we come back to Chrome, refresh, every three seconds, you can see our console will currently have an object in there. And the messages will be zero. 
If we load up PHP Artisan Tinker, let's create another message here. And we will just say adding message. If you look in the console in Chrome, you can see that messages array now has one inside of it. If you drill down, you should see our content that we just added here, with the ID of 2. However, if we refresh a page, we only see the single message here. Now, we need to fix this, and this is a simple fix. Back in Sublime, we go over to our routes and our welcome route. Let's just remove the where. If we save that and refresh Chrome, you can see that now we have both of the messages. The one last little problem is, is that the messages are reversed. So let's remove the descending order I created at, because we want the newest message at the bottom, so it will be last in the list, and that's how we assign the latest ID. So if we refresh this in Chrome, you can see our messages have been switched, and no longer is our object or our messages have anything in there. So we can add another message, and in our console, we'll see that our array is now one. So let's work on getting these messages onto the screen themselves. Let's load Sublime back up and head back to the welcome view. And instead of console log the results, what we're going to have to do is cycle through them. So we can use jQuery's each function. So for each of our results, we'll pass in a anonymous function that accepts an index and then a value. And for now, let's just console log the value to see what we're working with. And to do some debugging, let's add that where back in for our welcome screen here. So where the ID is one, so we don't have to keep adding those messages into our database. If we refresh, within three seconds, we should see that we have some objects here. So we have an object, which is an array. So we're going to have to cycle through those. So to do that, back in welcome, we know that this value is actually a list of messages. So let's change this to messages. And next, for each of these messages, we're going to have to cycle through them. So we'll say for each of the messages, pass in the function, we'll just use an index, and this is the message itself. Using the message itself, we're going to pass it to another function, which we're going to write in one second here. So let's call this function add message. So add message will create at the top and we're going to accept a parameter of message. And what we're going to do is we're going to use jQuery to add the message into the div. So we need to start off with our selector and let's just append some HTML. So we'll have a div tag, an ending div, and then with inside of these, we'll have a message.content because it's in JSON format, we're able to do this. Next, we're going to have to assign the latest message ID. So we can start with a simple if statement where we check to see if the current message ID is bigger than the one that we've stored. And if it is, change the one that we've stored into the message ID itself. So again, for each of the results as a message, then for each of the messages as a message, add that current message and that message will append a div and check the ID. If we switch back to Chrome, give our page a refresh to grab the latest JavaScript. You can see that once we have our first message, we have the two that we're missing. Using PHP errors and Tinker, let's just add one more message. So we'll say final one. And without switching to the page, you can see it pulls up within three seconds. And as always, there's always room to improve. As you can see here, we're using the order by created at quite a few times. So this would be a good option to use a query scope in here. And with that said, I'd like to end this video and say thanks for watching.